Hello uh, friends, today I wanted to uh, do a little demonstration of the Fluke 9100A. Uh, this is a testing system from uh, Fluke. Sorry, it's not focusing properly. As far as I know, there are no videos on YouTube about it yet. There are uh, a good number of uh, videos about the Fluke uh, 9010 which is an older system than this and uh, because this is a newer system it's also more capable uh, whether you can use all the extra functionality about this one is uh, well at least discussable uh, this is uh, this was designed for you know factories who uh, want to check every pcb that is going out of the door and following that it has so many capabilities that you know, programming them and using them would be taking months, maybe years. So, very few people actually do that. Regretfully, I must say, because it's so such a powerful system, you could design, you know, a specific program to check out an entire arcade PCB or any other, maybe, you know, the little computer there. <laughs> you could write a program for that as well, but just takes a lot of time. Um, okay, so um, I've got a 9100A, um, it has a SCSI hard disk inside and it's the original fan so it will be really loud when I power it up and I wanted to show you everything so what you need to do always is power up the system first and then uh, power up the PCB. Of course, before you do that um, you have to remove the processor. Uh, this is a Z80 that's coming from this Galaxian board. And instead, you connect this pod. And the pod has a flat cable running to the location where the processor was. So you remove the processor, you insert this. Uh, normally, you should use some extra IC sockets, but I don't have them. So I have to really, be really careful when removing it, but it should work. Um, so basically what this does is that the, the Fluke will take over control of the entire PCB. Uh, you can actually run the PCB as well, uh, because it will emulate the processor. Um, so uh, the monitor on there is my testing monitor. I can actually connect it to the Fluke for programming it. I have a cable for that, um, but I'm not going to show you that now. Um, for now this is connected with uh, the SCART cable. As you see here, we have a little quickly uh, made uh, adapter and regular switching power supply. Um, I connected the 5 volts and 12 volts and I didn't even modify the board and that just works if you follow the steps correctly. And you can find that info on uh, mikesarcade.com. Okay, let's power up uh, the Fluke first. I really like the, the VFD uh, display that this has. It's nice and bright. So basically this is like a computer booting up. It's loading uh, files from the disk. Um, there were also a little bit less uh, expensive systems that I uh, didn't have hard disk drives, but they had floppy disk drives. Uh, this one has one as well on the side. Um, the floppies use a really weird uh, standard, and you can't read them with a PC or something like that, which is a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, if you, if you, I will just show the booting process. It says software version 6.1 and has 4 megabytes system RAM. Okay, and it's displaying an error now. And what it's saying is pod name not yet known, no UUT. UUT is the unit under test, so that's that's the PCB. And it says no UUT power, so there is no power yet on the UUT. And that's correct. 
and it says power up UUT and reset. And that's a normal procedure. So now we're going to apply power to the, to the PCB. This plug-in. And you can see we get a screen of garbage because there's nothing running on the, on the PCB now. But it still displays something. So some basic uh, video circuits are working. But the process is not, the, uh, the fluke is not yet doing anything. So it says I have to reset now. So here's the reset button. Just hit it and then wait. It says waiting or you have to wait. And it says ready. So now we're ready to test some stuff. However, um, most of the arcade PCBs have a watchdog circuit. And the watchdog circuit is there to check if the processor is still running. And if it stops running for some reason, a bug or anything else, then the watchdog kind of kick starts the, the, boot, the, the, the system again. It gives it a reset. And we don't want the system to check for that signal. So we have to force some stuff. It's a little bit tedious because you have to do it every time. But um, you go to the setup menu. It's this button, setup menu. And then with the arrow keys I go to power. And um, what you see here in the menus corresponds to the function keys here. So that depends on every situation you are in or menu you are in. And it says forcing here. So I, I select forcing and it says um, set a pod report uh, forcing signal active on. But we have to switch that to off. So I have to move the cursor. Now it's on on and I can select on or off here. So I hit this one, now it's off. And I have to execute the command by entering it. Okay, so now we don't have any, uh, we don't don't get any uh, reports about the watch the reset line being uh, activated. So um, I can show you uh, that uh, the flu can run the board, and what you will see is actually exactly what I saw when I just powered up the board directly without the fluke uh, being there. So. Um, I can run the UUT, the unit under test, that's the button here, run UUT, I hit that and it will say run UUT special, I don't know what this special, but and it says address 0 and normally uh, every processor always starts with address 0 so uh, what it does is gets uh, the instruction that is located on address, address 0 which is on the ROM and it will execute that very first command and so normally you always start it like this. Um, so you say enter and now it's running uh, the PCB as if there would be a processor on it. And what you see here now is exactly what I saw when I just powered up the board. And my iPad camera is a little bit slow but what I can see here very faintly and very quickly it says bad RAM 2. And that's indicating to certain RAMs on the board, but you will see there's a little uh, test program on the normal uh, collection software and that does some basic checking. So this is exactly now running as it would be with a, a regular uh, processor. Now I can stop this process because I can't do anything else right now. So I have to hit the button again, run UUT and then it says one of the options is hold here, and I want to hold uh, the running, so I hit this button and this changes to hold and execute it, and now the screen freezes again, actually it's dark, um, which doesn't say a lot, a lot really, but okay, now the process has stopped, I can start doing some tests. And I got some information because this is a Galaxian board uh, from uh, Marcos Arcade site, MarcosArcade.com. He's a British guy who does, uh, he, he made the multi-kit for the Galaxian hardware. 
and he has also a lot of information about uh, how to repair um, collection boards so I got some info from him and he uh, basically what you can do always with any system is uh, run a bus test um, that will check the address bus and I think the data bus as well I'm not sure really but you can always do that um, test bus adds, it says address FFFF that's always an hexadecimal I'm not going to explain hexadecimal for you now because you can google that um, uh, let me just say that F represents uh, the value of 16 decimal so a combination of that will give you the, the highest address on an 8 bits uh, microprocessor and this is a Z80 so that's an 8 bits microprocessor anyway it doesn't really matter much which address you choose I think but so you can just um, execute this and this is a little bit uh, strange about this system it will not say oh, okay it will not give you a message oh everything is okay if it's run a test it's just it keep silence silent if there is no errors so you have to get used to that a little bit and there are some indication LEDs here and the, the top one is busy so if that one is lit, then you know that it's executing the command you are uh, you are doing now. See, every time I press the button, it will execute it. Um, if I want to loop test, which can be handy if you want to um, follow signals on the PCB with uh, a logic tester, then you can repeat the command. It will do it once. And you can loop it. If you loop it, you can see that it will continue to execute the same uh, test which can be very handy sometimes and I can stop that process as well of course so now it says stopped okay so what does this tell me um, it tells you that the address lines are fine uh, that there are uh, data lines are fine there are no uh, shorts between them and stuff like that so that's a good first step the next step that uh, Micros Arcade suggests is reading the very first address in memory. So um, I, I hit the read, bu read button, just, and what it does um, is uh, read an address and display it on the display. And I don't want to read FFFF because I don't know what value that will be, so I'll change that to zero. That's what uh, Micros just suggests to do and he says the result should be AF okay so I ex executed the command now and it indeed says AF and even when I loop it you see that it's executing again and again and the result stays the same so that's very solid um, sometimes if you're working with RAM or stuff uh, you see the values change that's definitely an indication there's something wrong so I'm stopping this now it says stopped okay so that's the basic first test that's just one byte one very first address of the of the entire uh, uh, ROMs that are here I can do um, ROM tests on this one but uh, regretfully because the 9100 is not so popular in the arcade collector scene um, the, 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 the checksums it comes up with the signatures um, what it does basically is check the ROMs and there's some calculation going on and it will give you a result on that and base if that result matches with something you know that is good then you know that the ROMs are okay um, and for the 9010, the Fluke 9010 there are a lot of known uh, results and signatures even if you use Romadent on the website you can get those signatures um, Regretfully, the 9100 gives a different signature, and um, what I've, from what I've read, there's only one guy who knows uh, what the yeah the, the the calculations behind it are. But supposedly, he's not wanting to share it, share it or something like that. Stupid, but okay. Um, however, uh, Andy from the UK has written a little program that you can enter and then you can do the normal CRC checks which are also displayed on uh, on the ROM ident pages so you can check ROMs like that as well but for now I'm going to leave the ROM tests um, because yeah I know a little bit already because of the first error it gave there might be something wrong with the RAM 
Okay, so the little list I've got here. This was used. Uh, this came from the information from Micros Arcade. It says um, read RAM, and the first section to do is the program RAM. And the program RAM is, of course, a RAM that is used by the program to store uh, values. Um, those chips are located at 7N and 7P, and if you wonder what what that is, but uh, they count in rows. The chips are uh, it's like A, B, C, D, E, etc., and then this is row one, two, three, four, five. So if you combine this, then you will get a location of the chip on the board. And 7N and 7P are ha just happen to be under the ROM board. Anyway, um, in the memory map of a processor, um, you should see uh, every 8-bit processor has 65,005 something, I don't know exactly, addresses it can um, address, really, a reach, uh, read or write. So, um, every piece of computing hardware has a memory map. Uh, on, uh, on certain locations there are ROMs, usually uh, it starts with zero, but you can also put ROMs in other locations on the memory, and also RAM. And the program RAM happens to be starting from hexadecimal 4000 to... It's four, I, should show, I should say 4000 to 43FF, according to the notes. So, what I can do is now a RAM test. RAM. I get the RAM test here. And it says test RAM fast. And I can I can change it to fast or full. Now if you do a fast test you don't have any errors. Probably it's gonna be okay. Um, so we'll stick to fast now. And it the next step is address. Do you want to uh, you can also use references but we will just I'm not going to uh, say what it is, but we have to enter the first address, and it was four zero zero zero. So I entered it with the keys here four zero zero zero, and then with the arrow key, I go to the end address, which was four. Let me check my note three ff. Okay, so now I'm ready to to start a test and when I do it mm, I don't know if something will happen on the screen no I don't think so but you can see now it's running the test it was busy and it says more information um, I think with one of the keys I can get to display more information oh yeah there's just a mask and uh, everything it's some extra options you can uh, normally it does a step two um, in the in the in the memory. Um, yeah, usually you will want to do that with step one. So I can do that again. Step one just me means that it uh, goes from address uh, four zero 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 to four zero zero one, etc. Okay, so. Yeah, like I said before, if there are no errors, it doesn't say OK or um, test OK or something like that. It just keeps silent. And it's a little bit annoying sometimes because it would be nice to have some feedback that, yes, OK, the test was OK. But really, um, if there's something wrong, it will display it. OK, so the program RAM is OK. I know that now. So the next uh, section I should check is the object RAM, and that's uh, from the address 500, no, 5800 up to 58FF. Okay, run the test. There we go. And now you can see something happening on the screen, on screen because it's the object RAM and obviously that has to do something with stuff happening on the screen. Okay, it ran the test and as you can see um, it finished it, this, this, the busy light is out and no errors. So that RAM seems to be okay as well. 
I could try to loop it just to see what it does on the screen. You can see that uh, the, it changes every time you run the test. And the reason for that is that the Fluke will uh, use uh, random values to write to the RAM and read it back in a very advanced way. It's not like a normal processor would do it. And actually, how that works is still a little bit mystical, I think. I'm not sure. But anyway, the reason why you see uh, the garbage uh, changing all the time is because it just uh, pushes a random uh, data to that RAM and reads it back. And as long as it corresp corresponds with what it accept, uh, expects it to be, then there will be no errors. So you can see that it's now looping, looping, looping. I'm going to stop that now, and it says stopped. Okay, so we have two RAM areas which are good, but um, if you check the Galaxian uh, uh, troubleshooting manual, then uh, you will see that uh, bad RAM 2 indicates to the video RAM, which is located on 3F and 3H. And the memory address range is 5000 to 53FF. So let's test that RAM. So I go to RAM test. And the address will be 5000 to 5. What did I say? Ooh, that's not 5. Yes, it is. 53FF. Okay, so let's run that test and now you can see even more stuff happening on the screen because, of course, it's the video RAM. And this is again all this random data it's, it's, it's pushing into the RAM and reading bank. And now we, hear, we heard a beep. And this is also an indication that there's an error. And it says that it stopped the test, so it didn't finish it, and the error it reports is attempted to write data FF at 5501F and read F7. So it, it, it tried to write FF into that memory location and when it read it back it said F7, which is of course not correct. Now I can run the test again of course. And you can see again the screen garbles differently and again I get an error 501F let's loop that A loop okay here we go now it's looping and you see that it will produce the same error every time So this is a good indication there's something really wrong with um, one of the video chips, the video RAMs, and those are located, where do I find them, where's my finger, here and here, one of those two guys, and I should be able uh, with the address that it gives, 501F, to know which one of those mm, chips uh, is the bad one. So that saves me uh, from uh, replacing both for now. But I have to figure out how. <laughs> I'm not sure which is the lower uh, address and which is the higher one. But uh, I should check the schematics and stuff. And then I should be able to figure it out. So that um, gives a little bit of a very basic functions of the Fluke 9100. It can do much more as I said. Um, one of the great features is this um, and this is uh, um, pretty much like a regular um, how do you call them? Logic tester. Um, it's just a, a measuring pen if you hit one of the uh, pins of the chips then the LEDs here they will light up green um, for low, red for high, and yellow for, I think, undefined state. And if both green and red are on, then it's pulsing really quickly. 
and actually you can program the system to read a stream of data from a pin and you can even insert data with it so you can send signals to it and all that stuff I've never used before but it's still very handy to if you if you're running a test like this this and you're looping let's start the looping okay here it goes again annoying beep but anyway and you start probing around let's do the RAM I don't expect anything uh, sensible to happen but it's just for a demonstration as you see here the green and the red led uh, light so there's something going on on the, oh, those pins so if you check over the, all those pins and compare it uh, to the schematics that you know which pin does what then maybe you can find a, a broken track or maybe a defective piece uh, IC or something like that of course it's not very interesting to know which pin is dead on, on a broken uh, RAM chip of course but sometimes you have broken traces or soldering blobs or some other connections maybe your board was converted and yeah. um, there are some bad uh, repairs or something like that and this is a pretty handy tool for that but I don't use it much more uh, than a regular logic tester. Let's just stop the beeping. Um, what you can also do is of course write uh, to a RAM uh, area uh, some kind of uh, data and then read it back. Mm. Uh, using that you can actually uh, produce um, characters on the screen just like a normal uh, the processor would do. And if you're really handy with it, you can fill the screen with uh, with zeros or something like that. So, anything else? Um, yeah, I think that's <laughs> about what I uh, what I know about it now. Um, although it's limited, um, it's a great tool. But you do have to know what is happening and. You do have to own uh, a good number of working pots, which is pretty expensive today. The systems are very rare and expensive as well, and I was really lucky to find a huge lot of them. And uh, yeah, it's good to see some uh, some use now of it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks. Bye.